to give him praise and worship hallelujah thank you jesus if you have breath in your body this morning the bible tells us that let everything that has breath praise the lord so all of us should be praising god this morning and happy fourth of july glory to god we know it's Independence Day, but we celebrate truly our spiritual independence, our freedom that comes from being in Christ Jesus. So we thank God for each and every one of you. We pray that you truly would join us in worshiping our wonderful Savior. Um, the Bible tells us that I will bless the Lord at all times, and this praise shall continually be in my mouth. We're going to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth on today. Praise Jesus. So please, if you're in your homes, um, beloved, 
uh, right there in your living room, your family room, whatever you may be. Uh, clap those hands. Give God glory for another opportunity to praise his name. Don't change that channel. This time to give God glory as our praise ensemble gives God praise through song. Praise God. Praise the Lord, everybody. We come to bless the Lord on today. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. Come on, let us rejoice together and clap our hands, stomp our feet, dance for joy together.
God. Praise God. I hope you give God praise for our music ministry um, this wonderful day that the Lord has made. Glory to God for them and ushering us into the presence of a mighty good God. Thank you, Jesus, um, for that. Just a wonderful reminder that he saved us. So therefore, we should thank him. Praise God. 
I want to just share a few things with you on this wonderful Sunday. Praise God for it. Um, just a few things to help us to be reminded about what's coming up. Amen. Uh, coming up on the second Sunday. Amen. The next Sunday in July, July the 11th, beloved, we're going to have another in-person worship uh, experience. Amen. So please make sure you show up. We love to have you. Invite your friends. Amen. Family members to come and worship with us. And of course, coming up on uh, the fourth Sunday in July, our homecoming service. You also are encouraged to come as well in person. We'll have a tailgating experience immediately following our homecoming service on that Sunday. So please be sure to bring your own food. Bring some food for the pastor too. Amen. First thing, amen. Uh, food, amen, and your lunch. <laughs> Glory to God. It's going to be a blessed time in the Lord. Also, I want to share with you coming up also on the second Sunday and the fourth Sunday in July, um, beloved, you want, we invite you to have pastries and coffee with yours truly and my wonderful wife, First Lady Hayes, amen, um, before our worship service starting between 9 and 9.30 on those Sunday mornings, the second Sunday and the fourth Sunday in July, and from 9 to 9 30 beloved we'll have pastry and coffee with yours truly and first lady I also want to share with you um, to remember to submit your uh, information for the 2021 graduates uh, to Sister Alma Gordon. Um, the graduates will be recognized on the second Sunday, July the 11th. So please be sure you submit your information. And of course, beloved, don't forget, starting the first Sunday in August, we will resume our in-person worship experiences every single Sunday. Glory to God. Uh, we, we're excited about that. We pray you come and help us celebrate our coming back to in-person worship. Uh, lastly here, um, I see we have our surveys that were already emailed out. You should re have received it already and you should receive one either via email or mail. Um, so if definitely you need a copy, definitely please, if you come to in-person worship, you could definitely see Sister Alma Gordon. Be sure to make sure you have a copy of that. That's a mouthful, I know, but it was a lot we wanted to share with you on this wonderful 4th of July Sunday. Glory to God. I hope and pray, um, beloved, that you remain in prayer for those that are sick and that are recovering at home or in the hospital, because we truly believe that the prayers of the righteous avail of much. Uh, with that being said, let's take a moment to pray together. Bow your heads right in your own homes or someone sitting next to you, grab them by the hand. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to worship you, to praise you. Oh, Lord, to celebrate your goodness, to celebrate your mercy and your loving kindness uh, over our lives. Truly, Lord, without you, we are truly nothing at all. But with you, God, we are everything you call us to be and so much more. We thank you for it, oh God, each and every day that you touch us just to have life. But most importantly, life more abundantly. Just so a, such a blessing just to be saved by your amazing grace. And we're able to live out our salvation each and every day that you give us breath. Father, please, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would have your way in this worship service, oh Lord. Touch us. Lord, some need healing, so give them healing in the name of Jesus. Some need deliverance. Give them deliverance in the name of Jesus. Somebody needs a miracle. Give them a miracle, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I don't know what their need is. All I know, Lord, is that you are more than able to supply it and meet the need. I thank you for what you're going to do. I just ask, Lord, have your way. Please, Jesus, have your way. Let your spirit take control right now. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. I hope you believe that. If you believe it, say amen. God bless you. Don't change that channel. Whom shall I be afraid? Come on, begin to speak it into the 
continue to say it in your spirit. Come on, lift it up in the atmosphere of where you ever you are. reads, and I, I pray it ministers to you. Proverbs 23, verse 7 uh, reads, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. I want to tag for our topic of our teaching, just from the simple subject, imagine being free. Imagine being free. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you so much for another opportunity, another chance, just of one call on your name to say your name, Jesus, to feel your presence, to know that you're with us. I call on you, O oh Lord, because I'm asking that your spirit will take control. Take control, O oh Lord, of my mouth. Turpentine my tongue. Help me to preach only what you want me to say. Help people to hear only what they need to hear in order to grow, in order to be empowered and to be in carriage. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me as well as your people because all of us need to hear from heaven. All of us need a touch from you. Have your way now. In Jesus' name we pray. Those who agree say amen. Amen. Imagine being free. One of my favorite, uh, almost textbooks, if you will, from a historical perspective, has to be from 20th century author, Dr. Carter G. Woodson, in his book, The Miseducation of the Negro. 
It says when you control a man's thinking, you don't have to worry about his actions. You do not have to tell him to stand here or go yonder. He will find his proper place and will stay in it. You do not need to send him to the back door. He will go without being told. In fact, if there is no back door, he will cut one for his spiritual or special benefit. Underneath the death of Dr. Woodson's statement is a universal yet profound truth that crosses all racial lines, which is, is man's thinking determines his actions and his actions explains his thoughts. Dr. Woodson is saying, the absurdity of a person cutting out a special door stems from absurd thinking. See, beloved, any kind of thinking that causes one to do improper, disrespectful, degrading, and what I call just plain dumb, could possibly resemble a person whose mind is not free. You see, my brothers and sisters, I submit to you today that the Emancipation Proclamation issued on January 1st, 1863, uh, only abolished chattel slavery. Matter of fact, now, as a result of Juneteenth, is celebrated since 1865, two years later, from the Emancipation Proclamation, truly was a celebration and commemoration for the end of slavery. Note that it took two or more years to truly bring it to an end. But the Emancipation Proclamation, truly beloved, failed to address the national epidemic problem of mental and spiritual slavery. You see, and as your spiritual congressman, just for a moment in the next 20 minutes, I would like to explain why we need to enact a new legislation that mandates every enslaved mind to be set free by the Lord Jesus Christ through his most holy word. For the Bible tells us for whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Now I understand that I am not what is called an ignoramus to understand many of you don't think this word truly applies to you. Before you draw premature conclusions, you are in mental bondage, beloved, if you think your dreams will never come true. You are a victim of mental bondage if you think you will always be stuck in the crisis you're in right now. There are spiritual change, beloved, over your mind if you think you will always be broke and always live from paycheck to paycheck, preach, brother, your mind is not free if you constantly think inside of a box. Your mind is on lockdown when you think God's munificent blessings are for someone else. And when you think God doesn't have plans to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. See, if I'm preaching to you, then it's time I believe, yes, on a day like the 4th of July, to have your mind set free because it is your father's good pleasure to bless you. Let me remind you that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you ask, think, or imagine. I hope you realize that God wants to bless you. You don't earn every single one of your blessings. You cannot merit possibly to be deserving of every blessing that comes into your life. God just wants to bless you because he loves you as his own child. See, beloved, our proverbial text uh, this morning says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. King Solomon, y'all know it, the, the wise author of this text was advising whoever would listen to be careful in accepting things from people because their heart or their mind is not right. 
Do you know anybody like that where their heart and mind just ain't right? See, this is why it says in verse 6, Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye. See, on the surface, this type of person appears genuine and sincere with their words. But on the inside of his heart, that is seat of one's mind, he had wrong or evil intentions. What we can deduce from Solomon's proverb is people who think wrong, evil, or negative in their mind ultimately through time are unrighteous, selfish, or negative people. Uh, if that's your plight this morning, then the devil has you right where he wants you in bondage. See, if the devil can attack your mind with carnal or evil thinking, then he knows how you will act and eventually become. That's why we must always understand that the enemy is after our mind. He not after your money, not after your car, not after your house, not after your bling, not after your beamer or your bins, not after any of the, or even your boot. He's after your mind. See, if you let the devil win the battle over your mind, he can destroy your marriage. He can get to get you to curse yourself. He can get you to derail your own destiny, homicide your hopes, assassinate your aspirations, vanquish your vision, murder your mission, sabotage your salvation, denounce your divinity, and pacify your passion for his promise. However, if you are determined to give the devil a beat down in order just to free your mind, then you got to do like the Bible says, cast down every imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. In other words, you got to free your mind. See, beloved, there are a few things you can do to release the inner thoughts, your inner thoughts from bondage. First, please hear me good. You got to choose to think positive regardless of your circumstances. See, recall the word says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. See, you can easily become a very positive person the moment you decide to think positive no matter what. See, Christians ought to be the most positive people on the planet. Yes, I said it. Reason being, Paul said in Philippians 4 and 8, he says, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, get this, y'all, think about such things. See, and I don't know what your circumstances are. Uh, you can always find something positive about it. See, there's always a silver lining underneath every dark cloud. So you see, people who choose to think positive are eternal optimists. See, it's not that they are oblivious to reality. Rather, they choose to focus on the good and not the bad. See, Jesus tried to get his disciples to think positive regardless of their circumstances. When he said in John 16, verse 33, Jesus, in this world, yield, that is, you will have trouble or tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. See, your children may be driving you crazy, but thank God he blessed you with the gift of children. You may have lost somebody close to you because of COVID, but at least they made a difference in your life. You may be broke as two left shoes, but just think he still supplies all of your needs according to his riches and glory. You may have been fired from your job, but just think God gave you a temporary vacation while he prepares 
you for your promotion. See, you may be sick in your body, but just think that he is known as Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals thee. How people may have walked out on you, but just think God will never leave you nor forsake you. You may be going through a living hell right now, but just think greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Please understand, just think that many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. I want you to free your mind, but you got to see it in your mind before it comes a reality. Please hear me good, beloved. I want to share this with you. Uh, H. Norman Wright had said, they said, there is an old legend about three men and their sacks. Each man had two sacks, one tied in front of his neck and the other tied to his back. See, when the first man was asked what was in his sacks, he said, in the sack on my back are all the good things our friends and family have done. That way they're hidden from view. In the front sack are all the bad things that have happened to me. And every now and then I stop, open the front sack and take things out, examine them and I think about them. See, because he stopped so much to concentrate on all the bad stuff, he really didn't make much progress in his life. I hope you're listening. The second man was asked about his sacks. He replied, in the front sack are all the good things I've done. I like to see them so quite often. I take them out to show them off to people. The sack in my back. Hmm. I keep all my mistakes in there and carry them all the time. Sure, yeah, they're heavy. They slow me down. But you know what? For some reason, I can't put them down. I hope you're listening. When the third man was asked about his sacks, he answered, the sack in my front is great. There I keep all the positive thoughts I have about people, all the blessings I've experienced, all the great things other people have done for me. Get this, y'all. The weight isn't the problem. Hmm. The sack is like sails of a ship. It keeps me going forward. See, the sack on my back, get this, y'all, is empty. There's nothing in it because I cut a big hole in its bottom. See, in there, I put all the bad things that I can think about myself or I hear about others. They go in one end, y'all know the rest, don't you, and go out the other. So I'm not carrying around any extra weight at all. My question for everybody this morning is what are you carrying in your sacks? What's been weighing you down? I just want to help you today. If you're going to think positive, Regardless of your circumstances, you're going to need a leak, a hole in your sack that's on your back. You got to think positive because the last time I checked, when you got God in your life, it doesn't matter what happens to you. Just know that there's a God that can bring you through anything. Hear me good, but second today, commit to avoiding negative people. Now, I don't want anybody to tune me out right here. This is a time to tune in. See, although you cannot always avoid negative people, I'm going to say it again because you didn't hear me. Although you cannot always avoid negative people, you should try because they can keep your mind in bondage if you're not strong enough to handle them. Mm -hmm. See, and I said it, I said this sometime uh, before, that I, and I'm going to say it again that I can't stand to be around negative people. Uh, I hope y'all listening. See, one negative person can bring down 50 or more people in less than five minutes. Yes, they can. Have you ever been uh, in a meeting where everything was going great until somebody uh, started complaining about what was wrong and 
how things couldn't get better about what this person should have been doing and what that person person did not do. See, they introduced business, beloved, that was resolved a long time ago. They resurrect dead stuff when dead stuff supposed to stay dead. Come on. See, evidently these are the types of people that are problem, problem makers rather than problem solvers. See, beloved, and I don't care how positive you are, you still have to commit to avoiding negative people because negative people lack the capacity to see the glass as half full rather than as half empty. Let me help you this way. One of my favorite uh, past pastor all saying tells a story about a positive farmer and a negative farmer. He said when rain fell on the land, the positive farmer would say, thank you Lord for watering our crops. The negative farmer said yeah but if this rain keeps up it's going to rot the roots away and we're never going to have a harvest. The sun came out and the positive farmer said thank you Lord for giving our crops the vitamins and the minerals they need. But the negative farmer said yeah but if this keeps up, it will scorch those plants. One day, the two farmers went out hunting together, and the positive farmer uh, brought along his new bird dog. Mm -hmm. and, he t and he couldn't wait just to show him off. A big goose flew overhead, and boom, the positive farmer brought the bird down in the middle of the lake. He told his friend, now watch what this bird dog can do. That dog jumped out of the boat and ran on top of the water. He picked up that goose, ran all the way back on top of the water, and placed that bird perfectly down in the boat. The positive farmer had said, now what do you think of that? The negative farmer shook his head. Y'all know how they roll. Shook his head in disgust and said, just what I thought. That dog can't even swim. Y'all get it later. See, obviously, that story, of course, is humorous. It's a joke. But we all know people like that, where you can tell them that the sky is blue, and they will swear up and down when they shouldn't swear that it's purple. See, beloved, if you're going to keep your mind free from negativity, then commit, beloved, to avoiding negative people. Start surrounding yourself with positive people because they have the means to propel you into your greatness. Positive people help you to unlock new ideas, new concepts, and new visions. Positive people will help you to get to the next level. Oh, I wish I had time to say that. But third in the day, I want you to get this. You got to change your self-image. Yes, you do. Uh, one dictionary tells us and describes it this way: that self-image uh, as one's concept is one's conception of oneself. Personally, I define it as one's vision of oneself. See, it is a deep down mental picture of who you think you are. Pastor Osteen tells it this way in your best life now. He said, psychologists have proved that you will most consistently perform in a manner that is in harmony with the image you have of yourself. Therefore, if you see yourself as inadequate, unimportant, unqualified, and unattractive, then more than likely, you will act like you're inadequate, unimportant, unqualified, and unattractive. See, if you see yourself as a failure, you finish the rest, then more than likely, you will act like a failure. But if you have the, a change, a change in your self-image by coming into agreement 
to what God's word says about you. Get this, beloved. You got to learn how to agree with the word that says you are created in the image of God. Line yourself up with the fact that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Line up with the fact that you are more than a conqueror. Line up with that you are God's workmanship, his masterpiece. Line up with that you are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Line up with that I am the head. Come on, somebody. And yes, I'm not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. Line up with this fact that you are a child of the most high God, that you are an ambassador for Christ, that you are blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when you got up this morning and going to be blessed when you lay your head on your pillow. You got to line up with the proper image that God has for you and of you and program your mind that way. Let me help you. Renowned author Norman Vincent Peale uh, tells it this way, and I'm taking my seat here, uh, tells a story of a young adventurous boy uh, who took an egg out of an eagle's nest uh, near his father's farm. He brought it back to the farm and put it with the chicken eggs under a sitting hen, a setting rather hen. See, the hen sat on the eggs until they hatched and out came a little eaglet among or along with the chicks. Uh, get this, the eaglet was raised among the chicken. Uh, for a while it was content and lived a normal chicken's life. But as it began to grow, uh, there were strange stirrings within Every once in a while, uh, it, that eagle would think there must be more to me than a chicken. See, but but it never did anything about it until one day. A tremendous eagle flew over the barnyard. Hmm. The eaglet felt strain, a strange new strength in its wings. It became aware of an enormous heartbeat in its breast. And as it watched that eagle, mm -hmm, uh, it thought came to its own mind. It said to himself, I'm like that. Mm -hmm. See, a chicken yard is not for me. It said, I want to climb the sky and perch on mountain crags. The eaglet had never flown before, but there was power and instinct within him. Uh, it spread its wings and was lifted to the top of a low hill. Exhilarated, it flew to a higher hilltop and finally on it to the blue, to the summit of a high mountain peak. You see, the eaglet had changed its self-image from that of a chicken into that of an eagle. And I'm just, I just want to ask a question for every child of God. I just want to ask a question for every person listening to me. Are you a chicken or an eagle? But let me help you define it since you're scratching it. Head. For chickens are comfortable with mediocrity while eagles move with superiority. Chickens, beloved, settle for less, but eagles want God's best. Chickens are limited to the pen while eagles fly from mountain to mountain. Chickens, beloved, are someone's stomach feel while eagles are a symbol of strength on every bill. Chickens can see only what's in front of them. Eagles can see what's miles ahead of them. I just want to tell somebody, and I pray you're getting real good. It's time for you to imagine being free in the Lord. Be free to be.
be what God had created you to be. That's why I pray in the name of Jesus. Be loose from every chain of pessimism. Be loose from every chain of self-doubt. Be loose in the name of Jesus from low self-esteem. Be loose from a poverty mentality. Be loose from being addicted to failure. Be loose from your past transgression, from your past sins, and your past hang-ups, and past relationships, past failures. Be loose, but while you're being loose, I pray you be set free. For whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Be loose to be free. Now imagine being free to start your own business. Imagine being free to write your own books. Imagine being free to have a productive career. Imagine being free in a new relationship. Be free to worship him. Be free to give him praise. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here that just want to be free? This is my independence day. This is my time to be free because Jesus has set me free. Be free to say thank you. Be free to lift up your hands. Be free to say hallelujah. Is there anybody out there? that just want to do their dance, you can be free, don't worry about your haters, don't worry about your neighbor, just be free to be what God created you to be, somebody give a praise, give a praise, say thank you, somebody give a glory, blessed be the name for making us free. Hallelujah! Amen. 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 Imagine being free. Imagine being free. God has so much in store for you. So much in store. A lot of that depends on you. Yeah. Truth is, a lot of times we got to get self out of the way. We are the ones that's holding ourselves back. Too often we give the devil too much credit. <laughs> when truly, sometimes it's just us. Yes, it's the enemy too. But I pray in Jesus' name that you truly become free. Truly become free. Beloved, you wanna be free to do everything that God has gifted you and called you to be, you gotta have Jesus Christ as your personal savior. All you have to do is confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus up from the dead. The Bible said, you shall be saved. You gotta confess it. You gotta believe it. And he'll set you free. You will never be the same once the Lord sets you free. There's nothing like it on this side of the grave. I pray you get that. Matter of fact, I want to pray for you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my brother, my sister that's struggling, that gets in bondage, that's got chains, Lord. Chains over their finance, chains over their marriage, chains over their relationships. Help them, O oh Lord, to loose it, to break the chains in your most holy name. I thank you, Lord, that there's power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. I thank you for that now. I bless you for it. Give them, remind them, oh Lord, those who already have a relationship with you, that they, they already have the power. Say, in the name of Jesus, I am free. I am free. I thank you for that now, God. Thank you for sending the reminder to all of us that nothing can keep us bound that we truly can be free in you 
to accomplish everything that you put inside of us to accomplish. We thank you for that now. I bless you for my brother, my sister. I thank you for their newfound freedom. I thank you for that now. Somebody going to give you praise, Lord, because they feel a new freedom in their life. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, things are looking better now for somebody because they're free. Chains are falling off somebody's mind, somebody's spirit. So now they can walk in their victory. Walk, oh Lord, into their destiny and what you have for them. I bless you for that now. For it's in Jesus' mighty name that I pray. In Jesus' name, if you believe that, say amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters.
Yeah. <laughs> 